So I was checking out my YouTube comments recently and I noticed just how much Matt Hayes says. I love how much QB content we've got on recently. Well, I tell you what, Matt, just for you, I'm going to be releasing daily videos for the rest of 2021. So all of you are going to have to suffer through it. So I don't usually say this on the channel at all, but make sure you are subscribed so you can get your daily helping of terrible content. Another thing I noticed recently is that quite a few people have been asking for me to do live replays again. That's something that I usually only do on Twitch, right? But in the interest of showing you the games that you usually don't see, today I'm going to be playing live. And what I wanted to do today is to use the awesome Tomato GG website to see what the most popular tanks have been over the last month. So I've got the filter set to month and uh, where's the battles, battles button. Oh, of course, it's premium tanks. That wouldn't be so interesting. OK, let's filter out all of the premium tanks, all of the reward tanks that people are obviously playing to be able to grind their credits. And let's just play regular tanks instead. And what the leopard? Seriously, with a completely average win ratio of nearly exactly 49%. Perfect, perfect. This will be a great tank. In second place behind the Leopard is the TNH TVZ51, although that's probably only popular because people are grinding it right now to be able to get the VZ55, which is in fifth place. So the Leopard 1, the Gorilla 15, and even possibly the Progetto. Let's jump straight in. So the Leopard 1, just an absolute classic inside world of tanks. I, it's, it's actually no surprise to me why this thing is so popular. It's fast. It's got a blooming good gun and it's an incredible sniping tank. Man, this is the first time I've played live on YouTube in so long. It's it's outrageous. Whenever I'm live streaming on Twitch, it doesn't really seem like a big deal. You have a bad game, you've got another six hours to be able to make up for it. Today is going to have to just be all in. And you know what? I'm going to play just like that. I'm going to play all in. So look, immediately we have an alpha on our team saying hill. Yeah, let's take it. Let's, let's, let's get it, friend. So yeah, okay. So when I'm playing in the Leopard on this kind of a map, it's really awkward because usually in a Leopard, what you want to do is be able to snipe, right? But on a map like Tundra, when the hill is just so important, as we saw, I believe, in yesterday's YouTube video, which was on the EBR 105, we kind of got to take a risk to be able to get on top of the hill. Now, the equipment that I'm using on this vehicle will be standard. I think it'll be gun, rammer with vents and also vertical stabilizers to be able to just give this thing an absolute laser pointer. You could probably drop the vertical stabilizers on this tank, but I would thoroughly recommend to use the other two pieces of equipment. All right, so luckily for us, the enemy EBR is actually making their way towards the west and the Sheridan as well. And am I about to get hard cornered? L luckily, I'm not. Oh, Mr. TBP catches the bat chat, crosses, gets a shot in. I only take one from the 140 and immediately this is looking pretty juicy. So I'm looking for this VZ55. He's behind that building. It's not really going to be more than a building, actually, more like a blooming hill. I'm still managing to hit that 140, but nobody's going to spot that VZ55. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this bush over here and see if we can have a little pesky few shots on this 140. Now, if I can trade one for one, this is actually pretty good against these Soviet mediums. So, clack. Ooh. And a track as well. Oh, do you have a good repair crew? Let's find out. Oh. Oh, you don't use a fire extinguisher either? Oh. Oh, I'm really sorry about that, says the German lightly armored tank to the Soviet meta. Well, K91's not really meta. Well, after 866 free damage, it looks like my luck is a little bit good today just because my luck is good doesn't mean that we can kind of become a little bit complacent anyone get a feeling this is one of those kind of games already that is going to last all of about three minutes before it's over do you know what i'm gonna do i'm actually going to go and try and get into the bush that's up there that's a, an absolute wonderful position for getting crossfire and i see a mouse and i see a udes and i should be able to do some nasty things to them i don't really want to go down the middle of the map right now because they do have a vz55 platoon who's over there if I was being really good guy quacky baby right now, instead of going up here and farming these vehicles, I should really go back to base and be able to defend that. Am I a good guy today? It's a Wednesday. It's not even really that special of a day of the week. That Udez is lower plate. Isn't that special either, is it? What's this mouse doing? I'm letting that Udez fire before I go out again, but he's taking too long, so I'm just going to have a go. I bounce my regular rounds. Doesn't look like my Udez wants to fire. I got a bad feeling that these VZs are going to be able to take this down, but hopefully I can clunk through this mouse. But even angled like that with my gold rounds, this mouse is just laughing his way away from me. 
Okay, they've already started to cap, but I feel like I've committed to this flank and it'd be a bad move now to leave. I guess I'd just shoot the, the butt of the mouse. Why would I want to shoot the side? I actually think that we're going to lose this game because that's two full health VZ55s. So maybe Greedy Baby here has actually just thrown this game for his team. Yeah, they have to get down off the hill. Um, I hope they've got some health. Okay, you know what? It's not too late. We can make up for our greed. We can make up for our greedy plays against the VZ55. Well, not against the VZ55s, against the mouse. So I'm hoping, beyond all hope, that somebody is going to interrupt the cap circle, but why would they, you know? Because you weren't QB, you were overfiring gold into the, to the, the rear of a mouse. How cheeky of you. But we got some time, possibly maybe 28 seconds. All we need is one more interrupt now and I can use all of my hit points to be able to make my way up here. So they've actually got a rock in this cap circle. This is going to be a disaster, by the way. This is actually going to be a disaster. I'm going to lose all of my hit points to the VZ55s. So they're going to double tap me so easily. Actually, no, they're going to let me interrupt them. That was very nice of him. If he pushes me, I've still got hit points to be able to survive. If he leaves the cap circle, we should win as well. Wow, that was actually a really good interrupt. I'm going to aim for his weak point still. Probably don't need gold at this stage, but if I bounce, then I'm going to look like a, a silly sausage if we lose the game afterwards. And wow, looks like that interrupt. I don't think it was the one that really... Wow, that was a bad shot. I don't think it was the one that really won the game. But it was one that will hopefully make a difference in this battle. Finish the pattern off. Give the VZ55 a little bit of a touch at the end of the game. And while we didn't really get to see too much of the leopard sniping in this round, we got to see that that mobility is key. If I was playing other medium tanks, then I wouldn't have been able to get back. And that's why the leopard's so fun. It's a sniper, but it's not an immobile sniper. And obviously, when you're focused at trying to keep your opponents at a decent distance, it's always very nice when you're able to do so with your mobility. All right, so we finished second on experience top on damage. I'm going to boost that because I'm not going to be playing too much World of Tanks today. It's kind of my day off streaming, but I'm going to be still getting in these uh, most popular vehicles, right? Okay, so we've seen the Leopard. Now it's time for the Gorilla. We're going to be sniping again. What is it about snipers that just make them oh so popular inside World of Tanks? Well, I think it's probably more of a case of their German tanks and their German tanks that are quite exciting, right? Everybody knows about the Tiger. Everybody knows about vehicles like the Leopard. You get to see them going around Tankfest, for example, each year. How fabulous they are. And lots of people have kind of grown up with their parents knowing about Leopards, for example. Or maybe they've grown up. There's quite a few lovely people inside the community who I know who have been like Leopard drivers. So let's take a look to see what we're going to do here in the Gorilla. Okay, this is a tricky map because obviously... If you're playing a tank destroyer, where do you want to go on a map like this? Probably over towards the southeast, you know, chill at the back of the map and just be able to snipe through. Alternatively, what I could do is try to use my mobility to push up down the west. I am actually going to go east. I'm going to go east because I really don't think that the gorilla is going to be a west tank. I usually take this vehicle down the west uh, and try and put pressure the hill. But I feel like maybe my team can do that. I think the number of tank destroyers means this game is going to go on a little bit longer. And then hopefully I can manage to sneak my way to the back of the map without getting spotted by their two tier 9 light tanks. And then I can try and use some of our sneaky German nature to be able to harass. Oh well, you know what I talked to, what I, what I said about tier 9 light tanks. Well, that was, that was pretty crazy vision, wasn't it? That guy's got some incredible view range. T-54 lightweight probably. Well played. I'm really surprised. And that's actually a disaster for me because it now means that the enemy know that I'm back here. When you're in a sniper, you kind of don't want the enemy to know where you are because then you can get them to do stupid things, right? Talk about stupid things. Well, I mean, he did a stupid thing, but then RNG was like, Oh, hi, QB. I'm going to try and screw you over because you had such a nice game in your last tank, right? Is this VZ55 going to be able to spot me through the trees? Alarming. If I get spotted here, I am dead, mate. Very dead, mate. Absolutely dead. As I take a look to make sure I'm recording. Uh... Yeah, uh, that is unironically something that quite often happens. I'll have recorded a video, and then it'll be like, Oh! Oh, I wasn't recording? Oh, well, let's do it again. And I tell you what, that's really awful, because there's one thing that I really enjoy doing, and that is that all of my YouTube videos, they don't have scripts. They're kind of as it comes naturally. Sure, if I make a, an absolute meal of it, 
I will uh, edit some of the parts out, right? You'll see those in the stops and the starts. You're getting a little bit of insider info here, right? But um, by playing live, it's always it's always kind of fun because it feels fresh and you get kind of like that, that raw reaction. I feel like if you repeat things, then it becomes a little bit too meticulous and almost contrived in your head and it just doesn't seem right to me. Which is why I've always tried to do things live. But there's a, there's a fine line, right? If you're tired and you're not focused, then live can also be no good in itself. Alright, so it looks like my team are not really doing too well and this is what I've worried about when I was playing the gorilla and I come down this part of the map. If I go down the west, I'm guaranteed to make the west exciting. Guaranteed. However, by coming down the east here, there is absolutely no guarantee that I can make this exciting. Talk about exciting. That Object 268 version 4 was driving in a very uh, interesting way, wasn't it? Um, I, I kind of need to deal with that Object 268 version 4, but considering that they've got such a gun line back there, there's no way that I'm going to be able to push them. So heat in this tank is actually much, 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 much better than the regular rounds. You're packing an extra 50 millimeters of pen, which can really help when you're trying to deal with the E100. Um, I don't really need it so much for all of the other vehicles, but... Oh, baby, that's as easy as it gets. That E100 has got so few hit points. I guess he's got no field mods. Oh, uh, it's happening, Twitch and YouTube already. Irrelevant of where you would usually watch me. It's happening again. And do you know what it is? This is the games that you don't see. The games where the enemy team managed to absolutely obliterate yours because you didn't go and guard the West, I guess, and because your team is just worse. Um, they're, they're all having nice discussions in chat, telling them how much they like each other's anatomy and how much they, they appreciate each other's mothers and whatnot. Um, good, good, I'm glad. Hopefully I'm going to be able to crest this ridge and be able to get this 268 version 4. Oh, I don't quite have the gun depression. Is this going to be a disaster? Nah, at least I get a kill, right? Oh. Oh! Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Tortoise. I'll say thank you to him. He let me back. Well, that T probably wasn't the best trade of my life. But in this kind of a situation, you don't know how many shots you're even going to be able to get in the game, right? So sometimes it's actually a good idea just to try and take any shot that you can. Because those autoloaders are going to do very nasty things to me when they manage to find me. So equipment-wise in this vehicle, I do like to play with a... Why did I reload? Wow, am I really trying to save credits right now? Well, I guess my economy is good. It's just natural for me now to use intu intuition hmm, for when I don't have the right kind of shell. All right, 2,300 damage. It's not a great result for the gorilla. These things happen. This map is decided along the west. This is why the gorilla, while it does do quite a lot of damage, actually has a pretty awful win ratio overall. I would say, because it's, it, while it's flexible, it's just a little bit too fragile. It doesn't have the camera rating to be as sneaky as you would want it to be at tier 10, and probably quite rightly so. If you were to have this thing with the kind of mobility and flexibility that it has, and you also made it sneaky, it would probably be a little bit outrageous. Not the day for the Griller, my team managing to just not quite hold the enemy back on either flank. And that's really what you've got to do. You've got to try and hold the enemy back on at least one flank or try to win a flank to be able to win a game. Again, second on damage and we're sixth on experience. Well played to the enemy team. They deserve to win that one. Let's move on now to another one of the most popular tanks inside the game. I actually can't believe this. The Progetto 65, is it really that popular? Is there, are there really that many Germans and Italians playing World of Tanks? Let me know in the comments down below. Probably there are, actually, when I think about it. While we're actually loading into this battle, why don't we take a look at that list again? So yeah, Leopard, Gorilla, and Progetto. I'm not playing any of the Czech heavies because really those vehicles are only popular because they're being um, they're, they're, they're new, right? And they're, they're people are playing to either grind them up or playing them because they're their new toy. can't believe the EBR 105 is also one of the most popular vehicles. But that is one of the kind of tanks that you probably could just basically like rush in, right? You could just be an absolute crazy lad and just drive around and have very quick games. All right. So all tier 10 matchmaking right now. Is that what World of Tanks has become? Just tier 10 versus tier 10? Well, eh, I guess that's the game that people wanted it to be. Uh, all right. So let's move the Progetto 
the, the Progetto is one of these kind of flexible tanks that can kind of do everything. So when I say, like, let's move it, we could move it anywhere on the map and still kind of be successful. Where I think I really want to go is I want to make my way down the east. I'm going to just try and rush. This could be a disaster. In this game, because I'm using uh, coated optics vents and I'm using vertical stabilizers, a very standard setup for the Progetto. In this game, I'm actually probably one of the better scouts. Sure, there's an AMX-13-105 who's AFK on my team at the start of the battle. Oh, he just joined. That's nice. Good luck, AMX-13-105. And there's an EBR-105 on the enemy team. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to try and make a push because I think I can scout fairly well. Now, the Progetto, it's one of those tanks where you can just chill at the, the back and you can just kind of relax. And I know that if I was to do that, that this game wouldn't be a disaster. However... I am going to do the things, even when I play live on YouTube, that I usually would do. Because those are the plays that I usually would make that end up with getting an okay win ratio, at least overall. And, you know, sometimes more than not, end up with a little bit of damage here and there. Alright, so let's go forwards in the Progetto. I'm going to tell my team that I'm literally just going. And I could, lit I could die just immediately in this battle. In fact, the EBR might catch me, but I'm willing to take that risk. And he's there, and I could be dead very easily. Or I could kill him as I drive past. Am I dead anyway? Am I dead anyway? Am I dead anyway? Can I hide here for a second? All right, so you know what? If I die even now, it's a good trade for me personally. Um, I'm not happy with the damage, obviously, but I just got forwards and I got rid of the enemy's only light tank. I might die here as well. This isn't good. Oh gosh, yeah. I'm happy with it. I got forwards. I tried to take the fight to the enemy team and I instigated this kind of absolute melee. I just did not expect that everybody apparently is playing World of Tanks as if it's Friday, even if it's only Wednesday. My lord, look at the enemy team's aggression there. I guess that's what happens when you have a platoon of Object 268 version 4s and they didn't go and chill down the west. Uh, I didn't even know they were at the back of the map there and they just managed to absolutely plow forwards. And that is why the Object 268 version 4 is one of if not the best tank destroyers in the game because it can play like a medium it's got the speed like a medium it's got the armor like it's a heavy or even like a heavily armored tank destroyer and that was just an absolute disgusting fest but hopefully we've managed to actually kill enough vehicles and our team pushing down the west can be successful and we have an object 268 version 4 down there as well and because they're 268 version 4s one of them who's dead and one of them who i guess is now isolated down the east and not in the combat down the west maybe we can actually turn this around for our team so i will always stand by making a play like that we got 847 damage killed the ebr 2,000 spotting. We got a couple of vehicles killed. A couple of our allies died as well. It's a messy fight. But I feel that in World of Tanks, if you, it's better to commit than it is to kind of wilt away slowly like you saw me do in the Leopard. Not the Leopard, sorry. The Gorilla. All right, games are fast today, so I feel like I want to pick one more tank, and I want it to be a little bit different. So why don't I play a Reimatil Borsig Waffenträger, which has been played 626,000 times on the European server alone in the last 30 days. So I guess a lot of you are expecting what kind of equipment I would take on a Borsig. So I personally am going to use binoculars to pair with a gun rammer, and I'm also going to use a turbocharger on this vehicle, because otherwise its mobility is really horrendous. Next thing I'm going to do on this tank is to make sure that I take the reinforced suspension which is the second field modification that you can get and this will give you 15% better ground resistances which will massively help your vehicle's mobility. The next question is what gun to choose to use on the Borsig. There are two very competitive guns on this tank. We can either use the Derpy gun or we can use the 128 millimeter. Today, I actually am in a more of a 128 millimeter kind of mood. So I'm going to snipe my way through my opponents in that way. The 128 millimeter is way superior to the 150 millimeter for when you really want to snipe at decent distances. You've got better accuracy and you've got better DPM overall. The derp gun, however, is better for those kind of close quarters situations where you're going to be needing that, that higher alpha damage. And also 
the shorter gun, the 150 mm the larger in caliber but shorter gun, is actually significantly lighter on this tank as well, which can help your power to weight ratio and make your Borsig just that little bit more mobile. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what the Borsig is going to be capable of. I'm sure a lot of you are going to be um, looking at this Borsig skin and thinking, it, oh, it looks quite fetching, Mr. QB. Yes, it does. This one, I believe, was available in the shop last year. But full disclosure, Wargaming, as I'm a community contributor, gave this skin to me for free because I guess they wanted to show it off to the stream. That looks like the uh, Patriot really appreciates my 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 fancy looking tank as well. All right, so I'm going to use my turbo to be able to get uh, to get as forwards as I can when I'm playing in the Borsig. I want to be a little bit sneaky. I want to try and sit myself at the back of the map and try and maybe get into one of these bushes and then try and set up my binoculars along there. I have incredible camera rating on this vehicle and I wince as we've already lost our only light tank. The enemy, my team saying, wow, Lynx, yeah, I, I kind of agree, wow, Lynx, oh dear. It's always a little bit unfortunate when stuff like that happens. Oh, this is where I want this gun, should be more accurate to nail the... Nail the panther too? Oh, goodness gracious. In before, in all of the YouTube comments, people are going to be saying, oh, if you'd used the derp gun, you would have hit him. How? How if I'd used the derp gun would I have been able to hit him? That's outrageous. What? Am I using the derp gun right now? What is wrong with my tank? It's just not working. That is actually disgusting, though. I should be up a thousand damage. Okay, this WZ, this time I've got you. Wow, what are you doing? Take it. No, I probably shouldn't have fired so early there. But I was thinking after two bad bits of luck, surely bad luck can't strike three times. But apparently RNG does strike three times, so that's rather disappointing. I wonder if this Alpine Tiger is going to try and side scrape out. He's got all of his hit points. Usually vehicles will play a lot more defensively if they take a hit, right? Uh, it sounds obvious, but you'll be surprised at how you can correctly gauge whether it's worth fishing for a tank or not, depending on whether they've just recently taken a hit. All right, so I don't really want to be the player who takes the Borsig to the front and gets caught out and gets absolutely annihilated. But also, I don't want to be the player who sits at the back in the Borsig with two shells that should have done a combined 1,000 damage and ends up not doing anything in the battle. All right, so maybe what I can do is I can try and slinky up into the bush. See, I'm going to align myself up with the bush so that hopefully I can go and spot through the bush here without getting spotted by the E75TS. Got to be careful here, though. While the turbo is going to help me to be able to fall back in the position, I'm very surprised this E75TS doesn't want to play. Okay, well, it looks like my team is just losing the other side of the map. So I, now I've got a tricky decision. Do I want to try and push through here or do I want to try and fall back and try and look after the northeast of this map? I'm going to do the latter. I'm going to fall back. I'm going to try and go and look after the base, try and slow that play down. And do you know why I think it might also be a good play? Is because I, I, I've just got to hope that these players here are going to be okay and do something and not get farmed by the WZ. And then if we can manage to keep the hill and we can manage to keep this area, then it should give us a little bit of pressure on the rest of the map. Oh, I see a Borask on the enemy team. Is that Borask really called Borask Love? That's just outrageous. You know a vehicle's just, just got too much going for it when people are literally naming their accounts after a vehicle. Now... I, if, if I had a dollar for every time I've seen somebody called, like, Tiger Lover or, like, King Tiger or, or Rommel, you know, then I, I'd, I'd be a little bit richer than I, than I would be now. It's, it's kind of beside the point. It's just crazy that the Borask is just so outrageous that people are naming their accounts after it. Oh, man, these games today have been a little bit tragic, but that is what the live games are all about, right? Hopefully I can manage to see this Progetto as he comes around the corner. Never mind, I'm going to get spotted. And I'm going to get double tapped by the Progetto. I guess maybe their bat chat just isn't bad at this game. And he was able to to spot me. Yeah, well played. Bat chat was literally right in my face. Or the Borask or whatever. Okay, so bit of a stinker this game so in these kind of situations it's clear that we've lost unfortunately you know i'd love to try and pretend and be like yeah we can come back and get some damage and have a good one but right now all that there is left to do in this game is to try and actually hit something hit something in world of tanks that borask can do whatever he wants though bloody borask love hopefully i'll actually hit him 
Oh, this tank right now. Why is it not sniping, dude? Does it want me to fire gold? Is that it? Is that it, YouTube? Do I need to fire gold to be able to do any kind of damage? Oh, well, QP, if you didn't use the turbo and use the rotation device, you would have had better dispersion. You would have been able to hit the enemy tanks. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know. Oh. Yes! Somebody phone the president. We did damage in the Borsig. I feel like an absolute champion. And there's a scorpion who's literally just sitting at the end of the aisleway with the... What can you do, boys and girls, when you have those kind of teams and you have that kind of luck? I don't know what there is to say apart from, well, these vehicles might be the most popular inside World of Tanks, we can clearly see that just because they're popular doesn't actually mean that they're meta and doesn't actually mean that they're influential in all the individual battles or even that they're good in certain situations. I feel like vehicles like the Borsig and vehicles like the Leopard are vehicles that will just do insanely well in certain scenarios. But unfortunately, if you don't have the team to support or the right kind of situation, or you don't have a map that just seems to get overwhelmed instantly, can be a little bit tricky. Unfortunately as well, we got a draw in the Progetto 65. Uh, I died a minute and 21 seconds into the game and the game went on for another 13 and a half minutes, but no team was able to win. I'm very surprised about that. I thought that we had enough of an influence early to be able to win it, but I guess those Object 268 version 4s who were players just still managed to trundle through with arguably better tanks. And I just noticed one of the Object 268 version 4s on the enemy team fired three times, didn't hit anything, but still did 931 damage. Well, I guess he rammed someone. And so ladies and gents, boys and girls, while those weren't the results that I wanted, those were four games, very quick ones, in four of the most popular tanks on the European server in the last 30 days. And I, I hope that you were able to see at least some of the situations that arise and how at least I try to deal with them, even if sometimes it doesn't work out. Yeah, really hope you enjoyed this video and the live gameplay. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And remember to subscribe as I'm going to be releasing daily videos for the rest of 2021. And I'll guess I'll see all of you tomorrow.